to everybody. Uh, let's see. All right. What's up, everybody? Let me just go and hit that record button. And it seems like it's already recording. We have another recording coming up soon. And here we go. All right. So what's up, everybody? Today, we will be talking about wallet security. Now, I know this is a topic that a lot of people requested. And this is also a topic that is, um, you know, very new to a lot of people, right? People come into the space, especially Web3, crypto, NFTs, and they're thinking, okay, let me just set up a wallet and let me just start, you know, buying NFTs and buying crypto and I'll just leave it in here or I'll just put an app on my phone and that's where I'm going to store my cryptos and it's all good, right? So let me just start by explaining what wallets are. So we're going to go over this real quick because today we're going to talk about the security of wallets and not what are wallets, right? So wallets, Web3 wallets are essentially digital wallets, right? So you can have um, browser wallets, you can have, you know, hot wallets, cold wallets, but we'll get into that later. So a wallet has the ability to store digital assets, right? You can store anything like fungible, non-fungible, so NFTs, cryptos, all of that. All right. So here's the thing that I really want to talk to you all about, because this is something that is not quite known in the space, right? Now, you have people that have studied this or people that come in and have done their research. And this is something very important because a lot of the times, and this is, you know, we're going to go a lot more into crypto when we talk about custodial and non custodial, right? But a custodial, right? A custodian is a company that holds other institution financial assets, right? So these are two different types of wallets that you can have, right? And a non-custodial, which is the one that we promote and the one that I use is, so a non-custodial wallet means that there's no custodian. So the user is the only person who has access to the funds. So when we're talking about custodial wallets, you're thinking about exchanges, right? And we're talking about, you know, I'm not talking about the app or the wallet, but I'm talking about the web browser. So you got um, Coinbase, you got Kraken, you got Binance, right? And then you got non-custodial, which is, you know, you got Exodus, you got, um, let's say, you got Ledger, you got Trezor, um, you know, MetaMask. So what does that actually mean, custodial and non-custodial? So a custodial wallet is actually you know, an exchange that holds your private keys for you. Oh, so that means that you don't actually own your assets, but someone else owns it for you, right? So non-custodial is when you, you know, the individual have full access over your private keys, meaning that you are in 100% full control over your assets. Ah, Yes, exactly. And that's what we want, right? There's a first step in wallet security is to make sure that you have non-custodial wallets, that you own the private keys, all right? Because right now, as you can see, and I'm not going to call, you know, I'm not going to say any names of any companies, but anyone that's watching the news is seeing what's happening in the bear market. And it hasn't even started yet, right? The ripple effect. So what is going to happen to all of these exchanges or especially like smaller exchanges that go bankrupt? They usually take your money to pay off their debt. And that's why we want to stay away from custodial wallets. So when you are wanting to buy a specific type of cryptos and it's not available to buy from any of your non-custodial you know, wallets like MetaMask or you know, Uniswap, you can actually go to a custodial, you know, service. So like a, like an exchange like Kraken, you know, or Binance, you can purchase the asset, but then you immediately need to transfer it out of the exchange into your private wallet, into your hot wallet or cold wallet, right? 
So this is something very important that you need to understand is the custodial and non-custodial. All mm -hmm. right. So let's go further to the next slide. So different type of wallets. All right. So we're not going to go too deep into this um, because we're going to be talking about wallet security. So different types of wallets. So you got hot wallets, desktop wallets, uh, web wallets, mobile wallets. Then you got cold wallets, you know, hardware wallets and paper wallets. Not really uh, going to talk about paper wallets. Um, you know, we're, we're going to get a little bit into the hardware wallets and desktop wallets soon. So the difference between a hot wallet and a cold wallet. So a hot wallet is a wallet that is connected to the internet, right? So a hot wallet, the name itself says it, it's hot. Cold is meaning stored offline, right? So a cold wallet is actually a device that stores your private keys or, you know, um, in this case, we are going to talk about a hardware wallet. So it stores your private keys offline. So you'll actually need to go and connect that ledger verify transactions on that physical device. Whereas in a hot wallet, for example, um, a hot wallet, let's take MetaMask uh, as it, for an example, you can just go you know, on your browser extension, click that MetaMask, you know, connect to websites such as OpenSea, and you can sign it immediately through your browser, through the app. All right, so there's, there's no extra security there. So that's why it's hot. It's connected to the internet. These are also you know, more susceptible to hacks and scams and you know um, tons of different things that could go wrong. So a little bit of information about desktop wallets, web wallets, mobile wallets. Hot wallets are good if you want to do day-to-day -day activities. You know, if you want to go verify who you are, are hot wallets good to store assets? Um, that's can be yes, can be no. I would go ahead and say no. Uh, if it's, you know, for long-term storage, I would not recommend any hot wallets. I would recommend cold wallets as they are safer. But yet again, your cold wallets are only as safe as you are, but we'll get into that a little bit later. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So hot wallets and cold wallets. We'll be talking a little bit about these two different wallets, right? So a hot wallet, you have a MetaMask, right? You got Exodus, you got Phantom, uh, Solana wallet. Cold wallets, you got Ledger, Ledger and Trezor. Now, yes, there's many more hot wallets and yes, there's many more cold wallets, but we're not going to go too deep into these. These are just a few examples that, you know, you can um, use for your own research and you can actually do your own research and find the wallet that works the best for you, right? Now, the reason why I listed these ones, because these are the ones that I'm very familiar with and these are also wallets that, you know, I recommend people to use. Right. So MetaMask wallet is very easy to use, right? It's fairly safe as long as you're safe. You know, Exodus is very good. With Exodus, it's a, it's a desktop um, wallet. So you actually can, you know, download it on your PC. I always recommend to have it on a clean, empty PC that's, you know, never connected to the internet unless you need to use it. Uh, Exodus, actually, you own your private keys as well. Uh, it has a built-in exchange. So it makes it so much easier from actually going out in like different exchanges or connecting your wallet to Uniswap and all of these different um, uh, websites. So in Exodus, you can actually use crypto. You can't buy crypto with cards, but you can use crypto that you already have and you can actually exchange that, you know? And if you do have ERC-20 tokens, Ethereum tokens, uh, you do need to pay a little gas fee within Exodus because yet again, ERC-20 tokens require gas. Um, so that's a very good way to get started, uh, you know, to, to have a little bit of crypto. You can have a little bit there if you, if you really need to go and, you know, exchange or, you know, swap into different tokens. Yet again, we take these out and we send it to our ledgers, right? Ledger, Trezor, whatever cold wallet you decide or you think that works the best for you, that's the one that you want to go with. Right. And we'll get into that a little bit later uh, about cold wallets. And there's a few things that I need to mention as well. But yeah, so the difference between a hot wallet and a cold wallet, yet again, hot wallets are connected to the web, right? You can see it over here. And you got the cold wallets, which are stored offline, right? So you can take them, you can put them in a vault, you can, you know, um, hide them, whatever you need to do. All right. Yes. Now, if we go back one second, and we see here mobile wallets, 
All right. I'm going to go back to this slide. Why is there a red line here? Now, there's a lot of people. And when I say a lot, I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's 80 to 90% of people into the NFT space that I like I've talked to or that I, I see screenshots and it's all in their in their in their mobile phone. Pros and cons of using mobile wallets. Now, the first thing I teach and I tell my students is to never ever use mobile devices to store or to swap or to send anything crypto or NFT related. Now, we'll go and talk about that in just a second. Now, first, I want to go talk about the pros. You know, what are the pros of using a mobile wallet? It's easy to use. Hence why 80, 90% of, you know, people in the space are using it. There's also the fact that, you know, there's not much um, content out there and people don't really like to educate themselves on the fact uh, of, you know, what is Web3 and Web3 security. So most of the people go ahead and assume that it's safe. Now, we're going to go ahead and look at the cons, right? So what are a few, and these are just a few, right? There's so many more cons to having mobile wallets, right? There's always the people that are going to come and be like, hey, but I took my SIM card out. Hey, I did this. Hey, I did that. If you go and talk to any professional, they'll always, always tell you to never use mobile wallets. Now, why? Mobile wallets are susceptible to SIM swaps, right? So a SIM swap is when someone else, you know, there's there's multiple ways of doing this. One of the ways that you know um, they they do it is they have a device, right? They have a physical device, and what they do is they walk into malls or you know we're on the streets or wherever you are, and they can copy your SIM card with that device and put all the data or even your phone. They can literally send all the data back to that to another phone. So they download it, right? So another thing is they actually get your details, like your email, you know, your address. And there's a lot of um, ways that people can get data. Uh, it, it's so easy. So many data leaks, uh, you know, happen every day. So I'm, I'm sure, you know, most people's wallets uh, or, or phone numbers and email addresses are out there, right? All they need is to find it, to call your phone company, to act like they're you, and the phone company sends over a new SIM card, the same SIM card, right? And then as soon as they put it in their phone, there they have it, access to your entire phone, right? So another con is losing the phone, right? What do you do if your phone is lost? Oh, but I got the seed phrase. Well, great. What if someone gets into your phone or there's no password in the phone? Exactly, right? Phone being stolen. You're at the bar, you're having a drink, you're at the cafe, having a coffee, and your phone is stolen. What then? Right. Wi-Fi hacks. This is something that not many people know about. So this is a quick little story of um, this uh, guy that I know. He went over. This was COVID, right? And um, in in COVID, let's see. In COVID, he went to his cousin's house, and. Sorry, someone is trying to request remote control over the screen. Uh, I'm not too sure what's happening. But yeah, but yeah. Anyways, um, so he actually went over to his cousin's house and he had his phone with him. And this is two months in lockdown; nothing happened, right? And he goes over and he comes home that night, and all his assets are gone. His cousin didn't take it. But someone was connected to his Wi-Fi, his cousin's Wi-Fi, and managed to, you know, go on his phone because they were connected to the same network and clear him out. The same is with hotspot hacks, okay? If you go to an airport and you take your devices with you, right? This, this also goes for laptops, right? Anything that holds your assets, okay? So you go to an airport, and you connect to the hotspot, to the public hotspot, you actually give people that are on the hotspot, and if, if they're hackers, they know how to piggyback into your devices. So airport, hotspot, you know, Starbucks, you go out, wherever you go, 
very dangerous, okay? People can actually use that to gain access to your account, okay? So email hacks. Email hacks, people are using their Gmail, you know, Gmails get hacked, you know, once they hack your email, they can actually access everything in your phone, right? Apps with access to device, you know, there's a lot of apps and we always allow them, you know, to have access over our device. So this is what you need to think about before you do this stuff, okay? This is the stuff. You really need to understand why it's dangerous to have mobile wallets, right? All the passwords are saved, you know? You're more susceptible to downloading malware, right? People coming into your device and taking full control, right? Most people have every password saved on their mobile devices, your Gmails, right? Your bank account, your, your Discords, whatever it is. Whatever it is. So I need everyone to understand that it's very dangerous to use mobile devices. And I know everyone is like having 10, 20, 30 different reasons of why, you know, mobile is working, but um, yeah. All right. So what is the seed phrase? We're going to go into this a little bit. Uh, this is very important um, because you, you'll need this to be uh, safe. Oops. Let's see. Just give me a second, guys. Someone is trying to request remote access to my device. So I'm guessing there's someone in the chat that keeps doing that. Um, let's see. I'm not too sure. Okay. We'll go ahead in a second. Yeah, so I've been getting a pop-up for the past like 15 minutes of someone trying to gain control over, um, someone is requesting access for me to share my screen and that's not going to work. So <laughs> I'm just gonna try and find them and kick them real quick. Just a second, everybody. Okay, I think I found them. Uh, let me just go back to the slides. Give me one second, guys. All right, all right, here we go. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, I managed to find them and I actually banned them as well from, here we go. Yeah, so what happened is someone came into the Zoom and he kept requesting access for me to share um, my device. So what happened is that it kept popping up the whole time. Um, that's not very, handy as i was trying to explain everything it just kept popping up 
All right, let's go back and go here to seed phrases. Okay. All right, can everyone see this screen? All right, so seed phrases, all right? So what are seed phrases? We're gonna go and talk a little bit about this, right? We're gonna go talk a little bit about seed phrases and what they are. Let's see. So. All right, so a seed phrase, AKA a seed recovery phrase, backup seed phrase or a mnemonic phrase refers to a randomly generated list of 12 to 24 words, right? So your seed phrase is essentially your crypto wallet recovery password. Right? If you lose access to the device where it's initially stored on, you can actually use your seed phrase to back up that wallet, right? So in case you lose your ledger, you can go ahead and buy another ledger, right? It's not the end all be all, right? You can go ahead, buy another ledger and you can put in this recovery or the seed phrase and you can back up that wallet, right? So this is important to understand. Now, why is it important? Because anyone, anyone that has access to your seed phrase also has access to your device, uh, to your crypto. And that is very dangerous. And this is something that was a scam that used to go uh, around. People are definitely getting more educated on, on the seed phrases and the security of the seed phrases. Um, but definitely, it, it, it wasn't always um, you know, this clear what seed phrases were. All right, so seed phrases and... Let's see. So a seed phrase acts as your crypto wallet's master key. A seed phrase can help you regain access to your crypto wallet and everything inside of it. This also means that anyone that has your seed phrase can access your funds. So yet again, anyone that has access to your seed phrases, anyone, right? You, you leave it in a bar, you leave it at Starbucks, right? You go, you go to McDonald's and you, you leave it on the table. Anyone has access to your seed phrases, has access to your funds. So this is very important to understand in wallet security, right? You should never, ever have your seed phrases out in the open. Now, we'll talk about you know, a, a couple of ways of where, where to put your seed phrases and what to do with them in a second, but I just need you all to understand this, okay? see. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about passwords. Passwords are very, very important. Why? A lot of people come into the space, right? And you'll make an account, you'll make a MetaMask, you make an Exodus, you'll, you'll, you'll go on an exchange or, you know, you have, you'll have an email address and your password is like six, seven, eight characters long, which, you know, it's, it's completely fine when you're, um, when you're doing day-to-day -day activities, you know, when you're, when you're using it for your Netflix and everything. When you start to become an investor and anyone that owns crypto or, you know, NFTs, I don't, I don't know if you're an artist, if you're a collector, if you're whatever, a trader, an investor, you need to keep those assets safe. And one of the first things is by creating a password that is very strong. So you want to start by creating a password that is anywhere between 15 to 20 letters, numbers, special characters long. Because the more diversity your password has, the longer it is, the harder it is to crack. So you want to avoid using things from your personal life, right? So your birthday, pet names, names of your children, any other personal information that hackers can easily find on your social media. So this is very important to understand because 
when your password is stronger and when a password is longer, it actually takes so much longer for these hackers to hack you, right? They got, they got algorithms working 24 seven, guessing passwords. They're putting every single, um, you know, a combination possible. So it's, it's said that it takes years, years, decades for someone to, you know, generate a password that's between 15 to 20 characters long. I think it was like 180 years or something. I'm not too, not too sure. But this is why it's important to have long passwords. All right. Originality. So make sure you never use the same password twice. And this is going to be a little bit difficult for a lot of people. You know, everyone likes to have that, that one or two, uh, you know, one or two passwords that you'll use for everything because it's easy to remember and you think it's fairly safe. What happens if, you know, one gets leaked and you, you can't be sure that Google, you know, keeps them safe? What if someone hacks Google? Or what if someone hacks, you know, the website that, that you use and you use the same password and now all that data is out in the open, right? So you got to understand that every exchange, every MetaMask wallet, every Exodus wallet, everything you use, right? You need to create a new password. It's gonna take some time for you to, you know, memorize all of them, especially if they're 15 to 20 characters long, but it will keep you so much safer in the, in the long run, right? And that's what you want. You want to stay safe. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to have it, um, you know, easily guessable, you know, you don't, you don't want to go and, you know, have the same password to 20 different things, right? Your Netflix, your Google, your bank, like whatever it is, you need to understand that how important this is. Never use the same password twice, okay? Create a new password for every account, whether it's for MetaMask, your bank account, you know, your emails, whatever it is, and always write them down. Well, we'll, we'll get into, you know, how to store them in a second. I just really wanted to stress how important it is to write them down, right? Let's see. All right. The art of writing. This I wanted to make a whole slide on its own because it's so, so important. The art of writing, it truly is an art because almost no one writes anymore or people choose not to write. People, people want to do everything digitally, right? Although digital is good and we're in Web3 and you know, we want to have di digital, um, when it comes to your you know, seed phrases or passwords or you know, anything related with your finances, you don't want to have anything digital. You don't want to have half of your seed phrase in your email, half of your seed phrase in, in uh, I don't know, notepad, right? You want to make sure there's no digital trace because digital is easy to hack, right? Your computer, your phones, whatever, easy to hack. Now, a story about this, this, uh, this one guy, uh, Ledger actually made a video about it. He put his seed phrase, yes, in different emails. <laughs> but he still emailed it to himself. Someone gained control over his device, went to his email, probably had malware installed because it filtered through his email, found the seed phrases, recognized that it was from crypto, and he lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So you got to understand, you don't want to have anything digitally, your seed phrases, your, your passwords. If anything is on digital right now, if you've ever sent a screenshot of your seed phrase or your, or your um, passwords, if you are ever sent uh, a message and then deleted it, you know, if you ever send a Snapchat, whatever you did that is digital, you want to go ahead, right? You want to get off this Zoom, right? This is recorded. Go out, make a new wallet with a new seed phrase and a new password and transfer all your assets out immediately. Because if there is a digital trace, you're highly at risk, right? And what is the risk? Permanent loss of your assets. And that's not fun. Okay. so. 
You want to stay physical with your passwords or seed phrases, right? Because it's more secure, right? Stonebook. Now, we're, I'm not affiliated with Stonebook, but that's a great example. Stonebook is a, is a book that's tear resistant and it's made from ground up stone. So it's water resistant and tear resistant. That's amazing to have, right? And it's, it stays for years, like lifetime, right? Fire and waterproof safe or bags are highly recommended. So you have a stone book or, you know, you also got these uh, little metal devices, uh, the steel devices where you can, you know, put your passwords and your, and your seed phrases on. Very useful. Okay. You don't want to have everything on paper and then your house catches fire, you know, plus the firefighter comes and, you know, sprays the house with water. You don't want that. You know, all your seed phrases are gone. And when they're gone, when you don't have your seed phrases anymore, you also lost your assets because we said before those 24 words or the 12 words that's your assets right so if you lose them you can never back them up so it's very important very important to have everything written down physically but securely right get a stone book right? Get a fire and waterproof safe, right? There's, there's bags that you can buy, right? 20 bucks, 30 bucks in the States, right? Fire and waterproof bags, right? Put them in there. Safety deposit boxes, you know? You can divide your seed phrases and put them in safety deposit boxes. You can put them in vaults, all right? So you need to understand how easy it is to, you know, crack digital passwords or, you know, if you have anything stored digitally and how hard it is for anyone, because if someone wants to hack you or take your assets, they need to be with you. Have access to the ledger device, your seed phrase, and then they can transfer everything out. And this is, you know, we're getting into signing messages in a, in a, in a little bit. But we're talking about, you know, passwords and seed phrases. So this is very important to know as well. So you want to keep them secure. Okay. All right, having multiple wallets. This is something that is very new to a lot of people. And if it's not new, you've chosen to ignore it and not to use it. Why is this in a security workshop about wallets? Having multiple wallets, right? How many times have you heard of scams, right? How many times have you heard of people getting, you know, fished or people getting all their assets taken, right? A lot. So most of the time or majority of the time, they have all their assets in one place. They have all their assets in one wallet. Now they use that wallet to go and click on this and they go connect to this and they go on OpenSea. They go mint a bunch of stuff, you know? They'll, they'll list, they'll buy NFTs, you know? They'll, whatever it is, they do a lot of things, right? What they're not doing is keeping themselves safe. Let me tell you that, right? So what I recommend is have different type of, like have multiple wallets, right? In this case, we're gonna talk about MetaMask, but there's other wallets that you can use too, okay? So have a wallet for minting only. A mint only wallet? Yes, exactly. A mint only wallet. That's very, very important. So mint only wallet keeps you safe because there's no assets on there. You only use it for minting new projects. You know, you got a lot of these free, uh, free projects that are coming up right now. Do you want to make sure that you have a minting wallet just for minting with no assets in them? Okay. And then you want to have an everyday use wallet, a wallet that you use, you know, you connect here, you go and look at open, so you go do this, you go do that. Yet again, no, no assets, right? You, you want to keep yourself safe, right? Then you got a listing and buying wallet. And this is yet again, different than your minting wallet and different than your everyday use wallet. Because what if that minting wallet is compromised and you send your NFT over to list or to buy an NFT and it immediately gets, you know, 
transferred out. So have a listing and buying wallet. Yes, it's going to cost you some gas, you know, to keep transferring NFTs out, but it's worth it. It's, it's, it's worth it. It's definitely better than having all your assets taken, right? So knowing this, that you need multiple wallets, right? A lot of people ask, but how? I only have one MetaMask. I, I can't. I have to log out. I, I have to. So if you look at this, and I'm using Google Chrome as, a, as an example, but you can most likely do this with all the browsers too. This little icon on the top where you can log in to accounts, Okay, and I just made this real quick as an example. You can actually click on this. You can log into another profile and you can download another MetaMask extension in the same browser and you can access both of them. You don't have to log out. Oh, so you're telling me that I can go and have multiple MetaMask in one browser? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm telling you. So all of you want to go ahead, right? And go make a few, make one for minting and don't use it for anything else besides minting and then send it out, right? You want to make sure that you're safe, right? So whatever you mint, send it out to your ledger or to your cold wallet, right? Your everyday use wallet, you can use, you know, to go on, you know, Zapperfy and, uh, you know, you can go on... Ether scan and whatever, just do your day-to-day -day things, go scroll on OpenSea. Your listing and buying wallet is a wallet that you use only for listing and buying NFTs from marketplaces. So in case, you know, you go into that DM and someone offers you 10 ETH and you're like, oh no, like, oh my God, like I really want this. And you click that link and it's a trading website, right? And you go ahead and you connect your wallet. You will only lose that NFT. You don't lose all your assets. Oh, that's how you can stay safe. Exactly. It's not that hard. It's just this information is not out there, right? People don't want to do the research. People think having a wallet is enough. Once you sign a message, and we'll get to that in a minute, you're actually signing away your rights, your, your, your assets, you know, depending on what the, what the message says. So that's why it's important to have these different type of wallets, right? And you want to have a storage wallet, right? In this case, I'm talk going to talk about Ledger, where you store your NFTs. And this is for advanced people. You know, you got multi-sigs, you got, you know, multiple ledgers. I recommend having multiple ledgers. Have a ledger for, you know, listing and buying. Have a ledger for, you know, um, uh, storage. Have a ledger that you never connect. Oh. So you mean when I connect to OpenSea and I give my ledger vault a name, it's now connected? Yes, it is. So you want to go ahead and buy multiple devices, multiple cold wallets, right? Multiple ledgers. And have one that you never connect. Now, there's a cool feature from Ledger. You can actually transfer, and this is with the newer Ledgers, I think a Nano, Nano X and the, uh, the new Nano S, the, the, the upgraded version. They have built-in um, uh, software. You can send your NFTs to other wallets within the Ledger Live app. You don't even have to connect it to OpenSea. Exactly. Stay safe. Stay 20 steps ahead of these scammers, right? Stay 30 steps ahead of these, you know, hackers and scammers and, you know, all of these bad actors in the space. So have a ledger for storage, have a ledger and, you know, for your 10 KTF battles or whatever, you know, if you want to go to the wow website and wowify your hoodies and stuff, send it over to the other ledger that you connect and then send them back to the vault that you never connect. A vault doesn't even have a name on OpenSea, just a contract, just a, a wallet address, right? So a few tips, never store any assets in hot wallets. Um, a lot of people, you know, use hot wallets day to day. Is it safe if you do have a hot wallet that you never connect, you know, like, like a storage hot wallet? It's, it's fairly safe. But yet again, you want to be as safe as possible. Uh, and yet again, you're only as safe as how much you know. 
because yet again, you can have 20 ledgers and you go and sign a lot of messages and all of these ledgers and you give, <laughs> you, you set approval for all, it's no point, right? So yet again, education is key, okay? So don't store any assets, especially not in wallets that you use for minting, right? Everyday use, right? Listing and buying NFTs or pre-mint. You want to have different separate wallets for this, okay? All right, cold wallets. So this is probably the most important thing that you need to go and get to keep your assets out of the hands of the bad guys. Now, although there's many hardware wallets available on the market, right? There's there's so many different brands and so many different shapes. It's not, It's literally of the utmost importance that you will get a well-known brand that is thoroughly vetted and make sure you only get it from the official website. Oh, but um, uh, Bunny, I, I saw I saw Amazon has a, has a discount. I, I saw someone listing a ledger for 20 bucks. No. Oh, but but Bunny, there's a there's a there's a ledger on eBay. No. Oh, but it says it's a verified it's a verified vendor. No. No. The less hands that touch your device, the safer you and your assets will be. Well, let me let me say that again. The less hands that touch your device, the safer you're going to be. Right? Imagine, you know, Amazon, you know, they're they're a reseller, you know, it's official, everything is good. How many hands does it have to pass your device? How many chances of potential, you know, um, modifications to the device or someone taking the seat phrase and setting it up already and you know packaging it again? How many, how many? times are those chances increased now oh so you're telling me not to go and get the cheaper ledger exactly you want to stay safe twenty dollars is not gonna you know you want to keep an asset that's one two three ten twenty k safe and you want to save twenty dollars and that ends up being no just save up or just just pay the extra right there's there's many good brands out there you know you got to find whatever works best for you, right? So here is a good example, uh, March 22nd, 2001. One of uh, the Ledger users recently got scammed on Amazon, right? So the user bought a Ledger Nano S, which had already been initialized by a malicious seller, okay? So someone already had a Ledger, right? Resold it on Amazon. Someone actually thought, yay, I actually have a bargain for a ledger. Wow, everyone else is like, you know, buying expensive ledgers and I got $30 discount, puts all their assets on it and the other person has the seat phrase who can go in and take everything out, okay? So it's very important to understand that we only buy these type of devices from their official websites, right? Very, very important, okay? All right, we're going to be talking about something that not many will like, and uh, especially people that got scammed before or people that will get scammed in the future. This is something that's very, uh, it's a very sensitive topic, but we are here to talk about wallet security. And with wallet security comes taking responsibilities, right? So taking responsibilities in Web2 and in real life. So in Web2 and in real life, there's little to no responsibilities that you really need to take, right? Of course, there's responsibilities like keep yourself safe, don't give out your data, you know, make sure you transfer the money to the right bank account and, and all of that stuff. But in reality, most of the times when you're dealing with companies or projects or banks, you don't, you're not even in charge of the asset. Right? The banks own it for you, right? So when you make a mistake with the bank, right? You send money to somewhere else or you accidentally, you know, did something and your, your bank details are on the internet and, you know, you see somewhere in a different country, $500 get deposited. What happens? You get a call from the bank. Hey, did you, did you do this? And you're like, uh, no, I have no idea. Okay. Well, uh, this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to refund that for you. We're going to, we're going to take care of the problem. Okay. We're going to go revert the transaction for you. Okay. Right with companies, right? You 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 buy something, full or partial refunds. You'll see a lot of times. Hey, uh, my item is damaged. Do you want a partial refund? Or you can send the item back and get a full refund. Companies will replace products. Okay. 
The difference in Web3, and yet again, we go to custodial and non-custodial, right? You can kind of see Web2 as a custodial uh, type of <laughs> wallet. And you can see Web3 as a non-custodial. So you are in full control over the assets in your wallet and your wallet. Oh, so you're telling me if I have a MetaMask and I have NFTs on it and I go and I click on a phishing site, it's my fault? Unfortunately, yes. So this is why education is important, right? And it's, it's honestly one of the worst feelings in the world when you click that and it feels like you know, a rug has been pulled under you and you're falling. You're constantly, it's, it feels really bad. Right? But with great power comes great responsibility. Okay? So you're in full control over your assets, and only we can be held accountable for the errors that we make. So this is where it's important. When you go in and you sign a message, you're, you can see it. You can, you can literally see signing messages as signing contracts in real life and whatever you sign it's legally binding right in real life so in web3 it's also binding to the blockchain so whenever you sign you give the approval for whatever that message just was and if it says set approval for all or transfer from you're transferring either nfts out or you're giving them full access to certain tokens right so it's very important to understand that projects can't refund you or projects can go and help you in 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 you know giving you financial aids or going and getting the asset back because frankly projects are not in control over the assets you are when you own the nft you're in you're in full control over that asset you can't go and ask projects to send the project back there's a very big misconception because it comes from web 2 right i lost my parcel can you refund yeah sure thing that's the thing in Web3. You're in full control over your assets. You got to take responsibility, right? You got to take care. You got to learn how to read contracts. If you want to buy a 10, 20, 30, 50, 60K NFT, you have to understand that you have to study. You got to learn what this space is. Okay. So let's see. Let's go ahead to the next one. This is something that a lot of people want to see. Okay, I'm in my wallet. What does this mean? How can I tell if I'm giving my NFTs away? How can I tell if I'm giving the rights of all my NFTs away? Okay, so sending ETH, literally, if you go over here, you can, you can click on details, but you can also click on hex if you want to look at what, what the contract is saying, right? So either or details, and then I what I always do is I click on details and I click on hex just to be sure. <clears throat> okay, when you're sending ETH, above here should set uh, should say sending ETH. When you're sending an NFT, or when you're on a minting website or a phishing site, or you know one of those swap sites, and you're requested to sign a message to connect your wallet but it says transfer from or set approval for all, that's a red flag, okay? So if you're on a minting website, this should say mint, okay? So where it says sending ETH or where it says transfer from or where it says set approval for all, it should say mint. If it says anything else like sending ETH or transfer from or set approval for all, this means that you're either giving the approval to send ETH, so all the ETH that you have in your wallet, transfer NFTs, and they can link whichever contract addresses they want into that message, and that's the NFTs you'll send out. Most of the time is blue chips. Or set approval for all, which gives them full control over your assets, right? Now, with OpenSea, a lot of people are always like, oh, but OpenSea is requiring me. When you're on OpenSea and you're listing an NFT, you know, Yes, this will pop up because you do have to give them approval for them to access, but we kind of trust OpenSea. Does that make sense compared to a mint site that we don't know? 
right? So you want to make sure that OpenSea.io and you want to check that five, six, seven times. And you want to make sure that you're on the real OpenSea and you want to do your research. And yes, this process, my process of, of doing things sometimes take 15 to 20 minutes just to check, just to check what I'm doing. Yeah. How safe do you want to be? Right? So this is very important. So when you're sending ETH, it says sending ETH. When you're transferring an NFT, even to your own wallet, this is what it says, transfer from. If you ever see this when you mint or when you're on a swap website, right? With someone you don't know, right? And this set approval for all pops up. And um, whatever website you're on and you don't know what you're doing and you see this, it's a red flag. Okay? You're giving the rights of your wallet away. Okay? So you always want to make sure when you're on a minting website, it says mint and nothing else. And everyone, if you're not educated on how to use swap websites, stay away from it. Don't, don't do it. Don't. Majority of the scams happen through phishing sites that are swap sites. They give you something that's too good to be true. They impersonate someone that you know. They, they, they befriend you. It's very important to know, okay? All right. Now, a lot of the times, people don't know what to do, right? Wallet security is very important. But how do I stay safe after I click the link, right? What if I mint it from a malicious contract? What do I do, right? I signed a malicious wallet in my wallet. Most of the time, most of the time, almost immediately after we do it, we're like, let me, let me, let me check again. And then you check and you're like, oh no, did I just do that? And everything just, it feels like your soul just departed your body, right? What if you connected your wallet to a malicious site? Now I'm going to show you two things you can do. One, you know, it doesn't take the access away from the wallet, but it, it logs you out. It's the first step. Okay. So we go ahead. The first thing that you need to do is stay calm. Don't panic. It's, it's very tough and it's very hard because it's one of our natural and normal responses to panic. As soon as it happens, we start to freak out. We go into Discord. We start chatting like, oh my God, no, 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 no. That five minutes could either save your assets or not. So it's very important to act fast in these things, right? And it's very important to stay calm, even though it's very, very hard to do. Take a few deep, deep breaths, right? Get your focus on, because this could be the time you either lose it all or save it all. So what you need to do is you need to look, assess the situation, right? Okay, what happened? What did I just do? What did I click? What did I sign? And then immediately go and follow the next steps, which is you want to go to your wallet and there's different wallets. We're going to go uh, and use MetaMask because most of the people use MetaMask. Okay. You want to go ahead and select the three dots over here in your MetaMask and click on connected sites. And you want to go ahead and disconnect from the sites. This basically logs you out. This does not stop access. This does not revoke access, okay? This simply logs you out. Like, like, you know, you log into Discord or email, this logs you out from the site. That's all it does, okay? But it's a very good step that you need to follow. The next thing, this is what a lot of people are wondering about. What do I do once someone gained access to my account? Okay, so you go and you have to revoke all access because now when you sign that message, Sometimes, and I've seen this happen so many times, professional scammers and fishers, right? They have ETH and everything ready. They have massive, large corporations overseas and in different co uh, countries where you go as an employee and work to scam people. It's an actual job. And it's it, the government, you know, uh, keeps an eye closed because uh, they pay them, but they, they're professionals. I need you to understand, they go study how to be a scammer, 
right? They practice day and night, right? The boss gets all the money. It's like it's like a phone center. It's like a phone. It's like a call center. But instead of calling people, all they do is scam people online. So I need you to understand that th these are real things. Okay. So, what do you do when you do click a message or you do sign a message or you do? You want to go to etherscan.io or to revoke.cash, and you want to put your wallet address here, right where it says Ethereum address or ENS name, and you want to go and check everything there. So there's tokens and NFTs, and you can see which wallet just gained access, and you can go and revoke that. Yes, you do need gas fees, right? Like anything on ETH, you need to pay a gas fee. And yes, you do need to connect your wallet. So you want to make sure you are on the official website. Always, always make sure you're on the official website. Okay. So this should also be done on a regular basis and not just for when you accidentally sign a malicious, malicious message, right? So this is a very good tool that you can use, you know, once, once every week, once every day, once every month, whatever, to go and check and to see if your minting wallet and all of these wallets that you connect on a daily basis, do they have any access to any contracts? And you want to go ahead and revoke them. You pay a small gas fee and then it revokes it. And this is the first step into, you know, gaining back that, that wallet, right? Most of the times people get scammed, not immediately, but two, three, four, six hours later, because these scammers need to load ETH to your account most of the time if you don't have ETH in it, right? Or most of the time they do these phishing attacks and they wake up the next day and they look, okay, we've got this many uh, people that fell for it. They have no idea. Let's go clear them out, okay? So it's important to understand that you need to stay calm and you do have time depending on what the contract said, right? Depending on how fast these hackers or these scammers work. So it's very important to stay calm and to go do these things because this can keep you safe, all right? Going into the Discord, you know, and chatting about, oh no, this and this and this, great, right? You need to go and find people that help, but as soon as you step foot in Discord and you say, I signed Melissa's message, message I clicked this, I just got scammed. There's going to be 10 different people that are trying to scam you. So it's very important to note this, to write this down, but in case it ever happens to you, and it should not, and it, and it won't happen to you if you follow you know, the, different, the different wallets. And if it does happen, like we discussed, you'll only lose that one wallet that you put here, right? Uh, the one asset. You don't want to have all your assets in, in, in one wallet um, unless it's the safe. Uh, even then, I will recommend to have two different um, ledgers, all right? So etherscan.io, they got a beta version where you can revoke access, right? And revoke.cash. This is a very good tool and it's very handy, okay? So what are a few common scams? All right, so I've put them down here for you, right? You can go ahead, you can take a look, you can go and check out a few things, right? So you got scam DMs, and this is a very good um, example of what a scam DM is, right? Um, so here you go, you, you see this, hey, uh, seen you around on the NFT servers, thought you might be interested. Boom, OpenSea.fo, OpenSea.fo, right? That's fake, right? You always wanna make sure that these links are correct. Like scam site URL, you want to make sure that this is not MetaMask, install MetaMask.com. That's not MetaMask real, right? So you got to understand, I check these five, six times before I do anything. I only click on links inside of discords. And then I bookmark them because bookmarking them keeps you safe, okay? And you don't want to go and download files. Your DMs need to be off. Wallet security DMs need to be off, okay? Scam emails. You're going to get emails from OpenSea, from Ledger. Don't. Never click on links, right? We, we, we already know. Never click on links. You'll be surprised with how many people actually do click on links, right? Like this is a, this is a thing that I always say, um, you know, as much as we love clicking links, you know, in, in Web2, we go and click whatever, whatever we can. In Web3, that needs to stop, right? The going and clicking on everything, on, oh, this is fun, yay, I love clicking. No, it needs to stop in Web3, okay? You gotta, you gotta unlearn, right? 
and relearn, okay? So that's very important, right? Um, impersonator scam, text message scam, right? So you'll get actual text messages on your phone, uh, you know, saying that a parcel has arrived or that, you, you know, don't, don't, don't fall for it. If it's too good to be true, it is. And if they, they'll, they'll spark your curiosity, right? Hey, uh, a parcel just got returned or hey, a parcel got left here. You know, oh, a parcel? Oh, let me go and check. You click that, you might've downloaded something, right? So it's very important to understand, okay? Um, impersonator scam, right? Support scam, people will act like their support, you know? People will act like their moderators. People will have phishing scam, you know, fake giveaways. Look at this. This is a message that I personally got. Hey, I'm one of the giveaway managers at blah, blah, blah. Uh, you've been randomly picked to receive a allow list spot for our brand new and hot NFT. Well, um, funny thing is how did they randomly pick me if I've never even followed the project or I don't even know who they are? Right. So it's very important to understand that don't fall for these things. You know, having an allow list spot is not the end all be all. Right. So you want to stay safe. Right. Um, very important. People will try to gain access over your Discord, your Twitter, uh, whatever they can. OK, so be very vigilant on on this. All right. So a few last safety tips uh, that we will go over. Um, you know, just very simple to understand, very easy. Hide random airdrops in your wallet from unknown sources, even if they're verified. As long as it's unknown, hide them and do not interact with them. So that's very important to understand. Now, a lot of people might be like, hey, this is amazing. I just got an airdrop for blah, blah, blah. And you go and click and you unhype that and oh. There's an offer for one ETH on this airdrop that I've never seen that is completely random that I don't know how it ended up in my wallet. Let me go and accept it. You, you see where I'm going with this? And you'll be surprised. A lot of people will. A lot of people do. Um, I'm here to tell you, no, don't. Uh, that's a scam, right? When you don't recognize airdrops, stay away from them, right? When you see a one ETH um, uh offer on it, don't go and accept that because the, the metadata, the contract is, is designed in a way is as soon as you, you know, uh, transact that particular NFT or that asset, you're giving these people or these scammers the access they want to your assets. Okay. So this is very important to understand. You'll see, you get that, you know, that, that ETH in your, in your wallet. Okay. You get that, you know, um, uh, the offer, you know, you get that ETH, you're like, yeah, I just sold it. And then boop, that ETH and everything else just leaves your wallet again. So you want to make sure, right? Um, the minting websites are very important as well. A lot of scams come from minting websites. We just discussed that, right? Read, 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 you know, take 15 minutes, 20 minutes, go out and read about how to read contracts, you know, how to, how to read messages and all of that. Okay. So you want to hide these airdrops and don't interact with them. Hiding with them is not interacting with them, okay? So don't um, be afraid of hiding them. Also, hiding them doesn't hide them on the blockchain. It just hides them on OpenSea. So in case you're wondering like, hey, I've hidden them, but it's still in my Ether scan, it's because OpenSea just hides them, okay? They're, whatever's in your wallet, and this goes with crypto too. People will airdrop you random tokens. Don't interact with them. Just stay away. Just, just. If you, if you don't recognize it, stay away, right? I, I recently got an airdrop of like, what, 20,000 something US dollars of this token. Um, you could go and change it for 20K, but, you know, we know better. As soon as you do that, you lose, you know, access to your, um, or you lose your assets. So never use your phone to store, manage any crypto or NFTs. Always use a PC or a laptop, right? You know, SIM swapping is a real thing. We discussed that before as well. Very important to understand. Uh, use Proton Mail. Uh, yet again, I'm not affiliated with uh, Proton Mail. Use Proton Mail instead of Gmail. Okay, very important because Proton Mail, right, is an encrypted email, and they use very, very high, you know, standard, state-of-the-art technology to keep your, uh, you know, email safe. It's very harder to hack, and in case someone does gain access to your Proton Mail, 
uh, they won't be able to see your uh, emails. So there's, there's a lot of things you can do. Even if you lose your password, they automatically encrypt all the emails. So when you log in with the new, e uh, with the new password, you can't even see your previous emails. So it's, it's, it's very, very secure, okay? So buy and use multiple ledgers. Yeah, well, we just talked about that, right? How important it is to have different, you know, ledgers, different uh, uh, wallets, you know, uh, you know, a wallet for storage, uh, one wallet to connect with your, I don't know, uh, World of Woman website, you know, to, to wowify them or, you know, go to your 10 KTF battles or whatever it is, um, you know, never do trades with strangers. Yet again, I've seen so many people that, that fell for this, you know, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. It's, it's, uh, it's not fun at all. Um, they will do whatever they can to befriend you. They'll do whatever they can to impersonate someone, you know, they'll play into your insecurities. Okay. They play into your weaknesses. There's professionals in this space that have worked on this for years, right? They've just switched paths. They went from stocks to crypto. They went from email to crypto. So I need you to understand that. Don't click on any malicious links. It, 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 it's, it's the first thing out there and yet so many people are still doing it. Don't click on any malicious links, okay? Because unfortunately, once you click that link, there's, there's so many things that can happen. You can accidentally initiate a download. Right, you can accidentally go to a website um, uh, with a fake mint. You can you can go to a fake OpenSea. Just so many things that can happen. Okay, never give out your seed phrase. Now this has gotten better. A lot more people are getting educated on the seed phrase part, but this still happens. Okay, never give out your seed phrase. Right, and if it's not stored digitally, you can't even put it out there. So yet again, write it down the art of writing, right? Never share your screen. People will act like their support. You'll share your screen. You'll go and reveal your private keys, which is different than your public keys, right? Your public keys, the, the um, key that everyone can see and you can transfer crypto for, and you know, it's linked to your ENS. The private key, anyone that has access to the private key now has access to that wallet address. So that's important to know as well. So never share your screen because these people will make you go into your wallets and reveal your private keys, okay? Uh, quadruple check every URL, every URL. Every time I go on to the World of Women website, I check it four times. Yes, I just clicked on the Discord. Always verify, you know? When when uh, people come up with um, new premium pages or you know uh, new giveaways or just, I'll always make sure I'll double check with the team or with people in the community. Hey, um, you know, the Discord seems fine, but they just released a giveaway. Is this legit? Can I connect to the premint, right? Before I connect to premint, before I connect to OpenSea, before I do anything, I always go on Twitter and I check the news. Is premint compromised? Oh, so Bunny, you're telling me I can actually go and do that before I connect to premint and find out if it's compromised or not? Exactly, you can actually do that, okay? So go ahead and do these things because it will keep you safer and it will make this space so much more fun for you, right? So quadruple check every URL and quadruple check every single message in that wallet, okay? Always, always, always. Because if you check the message in the wallet, you can stay safe. You can see what you're signing, right? And if you don't know what it is, and if you don't know what website it is, and you know you don't know, uh, you know you go on a minting website and it says set approval for all. Well, unfortunately, um, everything can go wrong once you click that sign message. So you want to make sure that that is very, very, um, you know, embedded into your mind. You know do the research, you know, go, go back into these slides, you know, this will, this is recorded. It will be on, on YouTube. So go ahead and really, really check everything, everything you do. This is not web two, everybody. This is not web one. This is not in real life. This is web three. And we are in full control over our own assets. And it's so important to keep yourself and everyone else around you safe.
So everyone needs to go out there and everyone needs to go and share this with everyone they know, right? Because this information needs to go out there into the hands of everyone, especially new people. Because if we keep each other safe and they keep their friends safe and they keep their friends safe, eventually this space is gonna be a very secure and safe space, right? But it all starts with education, right? So education is the number one thing. And I just want to thank everybody here uh, to jump on this workshop. You know, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned uh, a few things. We're going to start uh, questions. You know, we're going to do a little Q&A. Um, so let's see if we can start to unmute some people. You know, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, even if you just want to have a little chat, you know, um, it's, it's good to connect with people. Let me go ahead and see where the participants are. All right, all right. Feel free to raise your hand. We got Emma over here. Emma's raising their hand. Let me see. You can go ahead and uh, unmute if you want to ask a question. Here's some questions in the chat. Metaverse Michelle and Mariel Veras. Should we remove MetaMask from our phone? Uh, should you? You shouldn't have MetaMask on the on the phone to begin with. So um, you can do two things. If you have the uh, seed phrase, if you have the seed phrase, um, and it's not stored digitally, you can go ahead and download MetaMask extension and put in the seed phrase, and it will automatically. Uh, you know, log into your MetaMask uh, and all your assets will be there. And then you can just go ahead and delete uh, MetaMask off your phone. Uh, so that's fine. If you do have it stored digitally, your passwords or your um, seed phrases, go ahead and create a new MetaMask with a new seed phrase, right? And make sure you uh, transfer all of the assets out from your mobile device. Um, mobile should not have any, any MetaMask. If you, if you do want to track... Or, or, you know, quick, oh, I'm sorry, I thought you stopped talking. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I just wanted to add because you said delete and I think this is really important. Um, when you when you get, when you transfer the seed phrase from the one MetaMask to the other, um, don't delete, uninstall, because if you delete, you won't be able to put that seed phrase back in the MetaMask and the new one, um, it won't allow you. So it's important to uninstall it and, and not delete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, um, uh, thank you. Thank you for that. That's that's very good. Um, uninstall the app. That's what I meant with uh, delete the app of your phone. So don't go and delete your actual wallet because that's not good. Okay. Very, very good. Thank you uh, for uh, bringing that up. Um, let's see. Our, um, but yeah, let's see what was the second question. Uh, Metaverse Michelle, get a second ledger just for seed phrases. Um, not sure if I understand that. Get a second ledger just for seed phrases. Do you mean get a second ledger just for a backup ledger? Uh, the answer is yes. If if you want to have a backup ledger, uh, which is very good in case you lose your second uh, your first ledger. But what I meant with get multiple ledgers is one to have as a safe, right? So have that ledger as a safe. Uh, you know, you never connect that to the internet, you know, if you really want to send assets out to list, you can send it to another ledger, right, which is yet secure again. Um, and then you can use a ledger live app because uh, what app, I mean, the software on the computer uh, or laptop, not your phone. Um, and then you can actually transfer the NFT out to the other ledger. And then now with that other ledger that you do connect to the, to the internet, uh, you can list it on OpenSea or uh, join your battles or, or you know, wowify your uh, get some get some drip. Let's see. So, how does the second ledger back up the first ledger if you lose it? Seed phrase. So, tw twelve to twenty four. Um, so, when you when you uh, set up a ledger, you get a choice. Um, you know, import account or create a new account. When you create a new account, it creates a new twelve to twenty four uh, seed phrase. When you click import account, you use or you take the seed phrase from the previous from the first ledger that you have. It's, you should have that. Uh, and then you just put that 24 seed phrase uh, or 12 seed phrase into the ledger. And then your um, account pretty much is now on this new ledger. In case you lose, lose your ledger, uh, you know, this is a good way to back it up, right? Because your seed phrase is what, you know, holds your assets and gives you full control over it. So it's kind of like a backup key, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see. 
live? What are some brands you recommend? Well, we, we've talked about the brands that I recommend. The one that I love using is uh, Ledger. Yet again, uh, I'm in no way affiliated with Ledger, um, but I love using Ledger. It's really easy to use. They're very user-friendly. Uh, their support uh, is, is also very, very good, um, uh, very fast. Um, I know for me, uh, where I live, it took a few weeks for the Ledger to arrive. So uh, you, know, you can always pick express shipping, which is an option, which is super good. Let's see, let's see. Any other questions? Mm -mm. Anyone want to come up and chat? I know Emma is the, let's see, here we go. Yep, I'm here. Yeah, hello. Thank you. I, look, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to you and the team for bringing this class to the community. Uh, the content was really on point. I've taken a few um, nuggets and tips that I think I'll, I'll spend the rest of the day just pondering on and, and wondering. I might even have to review the class because there were lots that there was so much content. I really did so much to, to, to draw upon, but more so it was your delivery. I found it was really a style that was really warm and inviting. And a lot of these concepts and ideas, you know, you hear them about the space and you don't necessarily mm -hmm. grasp them the first time you get them. So when someone takes the time to teach them to you, when someone has that, that approach where you don't feel like you're being talked down to or that you're a newbie. Um, I just really appreciated that. So thank you for, for your, your delivery, your content and the effort you've clearly put into delivering a, a really top quality presentation. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate the kind words. Yeah, we're, we're here to educate people. Uh, you know, I think that the safer we are, the safer the space will get and it will give these uh, scammers a hard time. So it's, you know, it's a win-win. <laughs> Anyone else uh, have a question, want to come on, introduce yourselves, have a little chat? Let's see, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and drop a uh, feedback link in here. Let me just see if I can uh, grab it. I'm going to sh stop sharing my screen now. Let's see. All right. And OK, OK, I'm going to try and share it in the Zoom. OK. Yeah, anyone else have any questions? Anyone else that want to come on and, and chat? Hey, hey, Bunny, I just had some, or I had one. Yep. So you know how you spoke about um, having uh, passwords, like really long passwords and not using the same one, because I think a lot of us are guilty of using, you know, the same one or two or three passwords across all our different accounts and subscriptions and everything. Mm -hmm. um, would you recommend or have you heard of Bitwarden? Uh, no, I, I don't think I have. So I'm uh, obviously with a uh, Discord moderator in Psychedelics Anonymous as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the other mods there is a, he actually works in um, tech security uh, at quite high levels. And he recommends a, a program called or a subscription called Bitwarden, B I T. Mm -hmm. W-A-R-D-E-N. And what that is, it's a, it basically stores all your passwords and remembers them for you. And it, it can do really good, like long, the really cryptographic passwords that you would never remember in a million years, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then you have one password uh, that you have to remember for Bitwarden. And that's all you have to remember. Um, and so his recommended, recommended to me to use that. And then what you do to secure your Bitwarden so that, you know, you don't want that one getting hacked because it's got all your passwords in it. Mm -hmm. He suggests using um, a product called YubiKey, which is yeah, YubiKey why. Very good. Yeah. And so I suppose a way to explain that would be it's almost like a, a cold, wallet, cold wallet or a ledger. Like it's a hardware product that For you need Twitter, to have. Right. Exactly. So you need to have a YubiKey to access your Bitwarden. And it's just apparently that is like what he calls like the gold standard for 2FA security and password security. And that's something that I've just signed up for Bitwarden. And I've also ordered a couple of UB keys because, you know, especially being a moderator yeah. in a couple of couple of big communities, the last thing I want to do is become compromised and for it to affect the community. So if anyone else out there is looking for best practices, do a bit of study on Bitwarden and also on YubiKey. And yeah, from what I've been told from a security expert, cybersecurity expert, that is a very good way to go. Mm. 
Yeah, um, it, I haven't heard of uh, that software, the project, but I definitely know uh, YubiKey is must have, especially if you're, you know, have a lot of assets and you, you want to be more advanced into the space. Uh, YubiKey is pretty much a, uh, you know, a physical device that is a 2FA as well. So it, it's it's very handy, very secure, you know, a mobile 2FA is like Google Authenticator. They're still prone to, you know, losing your phone and, you know, being hacked and all of these things. Uh, so YubiKey is definitely the way to go. Uh, I'm not too sure about uh, the software. I I have to look into it, but um, you know it, it has benefits, but also downsides because it's yet again still digital. Uh, so um, I need to go look into that because it does sound very <laughs> handy. I'll um I'll share the link if it's all right with the, like with Kashri and Cynthia. I'll share the link in um just to the website on the Wow page so that everyone yeah. can see it. Um, I said this this guy. I don't know if you've seen him around. His Twitter handle is Four Altered Beast. Uh, anyway, okay. he's a he's oh, part yeah. of the journey, yeah, mm -hmm. part of the journey project. And I said a, a Discord mod for um, uh, psychedelics anonymous. So I'll sh I'll go and get the Bitwarden link and I'll I'll share it so everyone can see it. Yeah, please. Awesome. All That's right. all I wanted to check, mate. No, I appreciate it. Anyone else want to come on? Um, any questions? Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and end the workshop. All right. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Hey, yeah, CS, Hi. is it? Yes, it's CS. <laughs> I, have, I have two questions. I typed it in the chat, but it might be um, not easily to see. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the first question, uh, in, in uh, I guess I'll just read the question that I wrote. In MetaMask, I disconnect from sites after using them, but I leave the wallet I use for listing connected to OpenSea. Should I disconnect that? But if someone tries yeah, to can, buy one of my... No, nah, that's fine. You can you can disconnect that. Like, uh, disconnecting is different than revoking access. Okay, it won't prevent someone from being able to buy the NFT once you disconnect, right? No, no, no. So when you when you go to the three dots connected sites, every time I'm done, even listing NFTs or whatever, you can just go ahead and that just logs you out pretty much from the web. It, it, it okay, does a, cool. Yeah. Cool. And then the second question I had, um, the malicious NFTs hidden in our wallets, can OpenSea delete them if we ask them to? No, because they're on the blockchain in your um, wallet. So whatever's you'll have access for that. And, but in order to delete them, you need to send them to a burn address. But if you do, that's interacting with it. So you don't right. interact with them. So it, it's kind of there. Uh, as of now, uh, you know, 2022, there's not much um, made for those. I'm sure there's going to be more security practices as we move forward in the Web3 space. And, you know, we we'll really start to um, modernize even more. Um, I'm, I'm sure they're going to come up with new things, even even verification on, on Discord. Everything is going to change. Um, but for now, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do once it's in your wallet. So OpenSea can't actually delete anything in your wallet. Uh, OpenSea is a marketplace that does not have control uh, over anything that goes on unless you list an NFT, then you set approval for all. So, But they, they can't actually delete an NFT. That's, that's not how it works. Okay, because one time I got two um, what were malicious, well, I would assume, NFTs into my Ledger wallet, and then I did not want to interact with them, and then I was surprised that OpenSea didn't automatically hide them, and then they went away on their own. But if that were to mm. happen again, if I tried to hide them, that would be interacting, and so then I, that could fine. potentially be a problem. On OpenSea. Hiding on OpenSea is fine, as long as you don't transfer them or you know sell them or uh, in, like accept offers. Okay, so if you get an unknown NFT and it's malicious, you can hide it and that doesn't count as interacting yeah. with it. No, you can hide it, but that's that's all you can do. I, I do not recommend doing anything else with it because they right. can't just, um, you know, delete unless they, you know, the, the owners of the contract just deleted the whole uh, contract. So the NFTs are always going to be in your wallet or or the malicious tokens or whatever people send to your wallet, it's in your wallet. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So just to touch on that quickly, if you don't mind, Barney. So when you're, yeah, sure. um, when you're hiding an NFT on OpenSea, you're actually interacting with the, the user interface on OpenSea. You're not interacting with the NFT. And so often what happens when you hide an NFT 
on OpenSea, if you actually go into your looks, if you go into looks rare and look at your profile on looks rare, the NFT that you've hidden on OpenSea will still be visible. So if that makes sense, you're actually only interacting with the OpenSea interface to show what's visible there. You're not actually... That doesn't make sense. Yep. So you know how you go into OpenSea, you've got your profile and you can see what NFTs are in there. Right, when you hide the NFT on your OpenSea profile, that's all you're doing. You're hiding it to, from people being able to see it on OpenSea. But then if you look on, like Bunny said, if you go to a different viewing platform to look at your NFTs, because OpenSea is not the only one, that NFT you've hidden will still be viewable in other places. You've only hidden it on OpenSea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so are you not interacting with the malicious NFT? NFT? Exactly. Is that more clear for everybody? No, not really. Not really. Okay, what? So what? What don't you get there? What? What's? What's the bit that's confusing? All of it. Okay. Right. Do you want to try and explain that better than I did, then, buddy? Well, pretty much, um, you know, you have your, you know, OpenSea. OpenSea is a marketplace. You connect your wallet to the marketplace and use their interface. You use OpenSea. It's not your wallet. So if you decide to hide something, it just takes away the picture on OpenSea. But in your wallet, it's still there because no blockchain transactions have been made. So that's the easiest way we can uh, explain. Oh, this. yeah, yeah. I understand it now. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Anyone else? A question? All right. Then it looks like we are going to end the workshop. Well, I just want to say again uh, one more time, thank you, everybody, for taking the time to come on here. Uh, you know, if you love the workshop, go ahead and fill out that form. Uh, you know, give some good feedback to us. And uh, I hope to catch you all in the chat. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you.